so old. Four hundred thousand Jews were placed into the Warsaw Ghetto in 1940. They were squished into tight living spaces, such as one room per family. Those families that were already living in, in areas of the ghetto were forced to give up their homes at any given moment. The food rations were decreased to a significantly lower amount than needed, at around 184 calories per person, compared to over 2,000 for Germans. The rate of employment dropped as the Jews were put inside the ghetto because they were fired from their jobs. Despite the Nazis' attempts to make life absolute hell for the Jews in the ghetto, the Jews nonetheless brought light into the ghetto. Maintaining a sense of dignity in the Warsaw Ghetto was their form of resistance. For instance, organizations put together educational systems, soup kitchens, as well as Yiddish theater. They tried to maintain normalcy in an abnormal situation. People became aware that even in such unmanageable circumstances, Torah and education were what would bring salvation. This is why they secretly created the educational system in the Warsaw Ghetto. They organized an underground religious schooling system. Kids would hide their school books under their clothes to avoid being caught by the Nazis. To avoid any suspicion, some of the schools disguised as soup kitchens, medical centers, and kindergartens. Even in a world where it looks like every man is for himself, the Jews of Warsaw proved this to be wrong. They found a way to keep each other going by opening up soup kitchens. It was clear that these individuals knew that by doing chesed and helping each other would bring a torturous situation closer to salvation. In times of struggle and utter darkness, Jews were able to shed some light into their own lives as well as the lives of others. They accomplished this through a form of entertainment, Yiddish theater. Since the theater was brought from their original communities, the entertainment also gave the Jews a feeling of home. They were able to remember a brighter and happier time. homemade and smuggled weapons in hand, they put their all into the revolt. Up against skilled German officers and machine guns, their greatest weapon was their dignity. Unbeknownst to the Germans, they were in for a fight. The Jews in Warsaw gathered every scrap of strength and charged forth towards the Germans. Their perseverance and might held off their enemies for nearly a month. However, on May 16, 1943, the Germans demolished the Great Synagogue of Warsaw. The revolt was being crushed, and they were complete. And they were preparing to completely wipe out the Jews and the ghetto once and for all. But the Jews of Warsaw did not surrender. 
For weeks, they barricaded themselves into bunkers and buildings to escape deportation and being slaughtered. After three days, the Nazis burned down the buildings, one by one, to force the Jews out. The Jews did whatever they could to hold on to their dignity. Some say we failed, but those who say that don't know what we were fighting for, what we are still fighting for. He spits on me. Head down, walk, schnell, making us face the ground from which we came and to which we will be forced to return. We were never full, but we've never known this hunger. It gnaws at our insides, tries to consume us, but we met a different kind of hunger taught us the value of living and how to die. Who taught us that when your guns are empty, grasp your book of faith and reload, march on. Who taught us that even though from the outside we appear downtrodden, dignity comes from within. It's the mother clutching her screaming son. It's the dirty Jew who still believes in God. It's the last dab of perfume on her trembling wrist. Every excruciating step, you let's